Hello and welcome to YemiCast, the video game p- p- podcast on Spotify, SoundCloud, and Apple Podcasts. Thank you so much for coming around to this episode. And if you're here for the premiere on Wednesday, my dudes, at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, oh, thank you so much. If you're not here for the premiere but you're listening on any other platform, I appreciate you none the less. There will also be an episode... This Sunday, 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 which I will be revealing my top 10 games of the year. We'll also be going over the Game Awards 2019 and what happened there. And we will also be going over everyone else's game of the year. So if you want to, you can join that Twitter thread on my Twitter at YemiTheFerret if you would uh, if you would like. And that's, I think that's it for announcements today. We got a, lo- a, lo- a lot to cover today. So if you don't mind... Uh, We're going to cut the music a little bit short, uh, Yemi, future Yemi. Cut it here. We're going to start with the Indie Showcase, which was uh, from Nintendo. There was two things that happened today, right? There was the Indie Showcase, and then there was the State of Play, the last State of Play for 2019. Now, I was going to do a live reaction of the State of Play like I did last time, but, of course... Uh, Sony made it at 9 a.m. my time, which would have been 6 p.m. Pacific time, which is just not, which isn't cool. Like, why, why would they do that? So, just, just to boycott Sony a little bit here, we're doing the Nintendo stuff first, and then we'll move over to the PlayStation State of Play after we get done with the Nintendo news. How about, you know, I think, I think that's a fair assessment, because the Nintendo ones always come at the same time. It's, it's hardly ever changed, but the Sony ones... Just make it at the same time. Make it at 4 p.m. or whatever the last one was because I can make it to those ones and I can do like a live thing. But instead, everything came out at 9 a.m. and guess what? Guess what? I was at work and guess what? I was spoiled for the biggest news, which we'll get to. Don't worry, we'll get to that. So, what happened in the indie showcase, Yemi? Well, let's see. Oh, I I forgot. Uh, State of Play 2019, the last one for this year. Boo! You stink! Sony for making me get spoiled. All right, so uh, the indie showcase. Let's, what happened in the indie showcase? We got a new game called Sports Story, which is a sequel to Golf Story, and it's coming exclusively to the Switch, and it will have more sports. Sports. You get it. Uh, so yeah. Um, Sports Story has been revealed, and it's heading exclusively to the Switch. Uh, it's a sequel to Golf Story, which is a RPG uh, that has you playing golf. And if you watch the reveal trailer, you see that you'll be able to go play golf along with tennis, fishing. Uh, there was baseball and stuff like that. It's a lot of different things, and they're all kind of combining together. Hockey and stuff like that. So there's one part in the trailer where you take a tennis racket and you hit like a golf ball into a hockey net. and (laughs) So it's going to be really interesting. So on Twitter, Nintendo of America, at Nintendo of America, came out and said, Sports Story, a game about sports, but not always is, coming exclusively to Nintendo Switch in the mid-2020s. 2020s. (laughs) In (laughs) mid-2020s. It's being designed by Sidebar... Side, sidebar games, and it's going to have golf, tennis, fishing, dungeons, espionage, mini games, and treasure. So, yeah, the game's set to launch in mid 2020, so hopefully, we'll see some more uh, about it in the future. Uh, just from the little uh, picture that they show on this screen, I've already watched the video. Um, it shows that there's going to be like a pirate ship, there's going to be volleyball, soccer, aka football. Uh, it looks like there's gliding. There's a glider. There's also a cricket bat holding guy with a. And there's a guy. Sh- looks like he hit a NFL football into his face. And then there's a tennis tennis ball bouncing over a pond. And a guy just hit it with a golf club. And there's fish and a pelican nearby. So it really looks like it's going to encompass everything, which is pretty cool. And I'm looking forward to this one. I have I had not played Golf Story, so I definitely want to play Golf Story before I play this. Uh, and, uh, seeing as this is going to be a Switch exclusive, who knows for how long, it'll be interesting to see how it does. Alright, so, also, co-op action RPG Dauntless is going to launch on the Switch, and that's coming out today. That's right, you can actually download it today. Phoenix Labs is the developer, and it's a free-to-play action RPG called Dauntless, and it's here it is, it's, it's here today, ready to go. 
Uh, this was actually announced almost exactly a year ago, and the game already came to PS4, Xbox One, and PC, and finally it's been ported to the Switch with the help of port specialist Ion Galaxy, which is the same studio that brought us Skyrim and Diablo 3. Ah, ribe, ribe. Uh, Nintendo's handheld hybrid console is getting dauntless, and you will be able to play for the first time ever, uh, cross-play with both, or with all, of the consoles and PC, so Xbox, PlayStation, PC, and Switch can all play together. The Switch version also includes some newly released content from the Storm of... From the form... <laughs> Ooh! The Switch version includes newly released content called Storm Chasers. Uh, and they came out and said in a blog post, To celebrate the launch, Phoenix Labs is releasing Storm Chasers, the biggest free content update to date. Storm Chasers includes the challenging new gameplay experience Escalation, a new type of sequent Sequential Hunt that features dual behemoth encounters in addition to a number of elements like all of the roguelike genre. Escalation accumulates in a showdown against a fearsome threat, the shock-infused behemoth Malkarion. <laughs> Storm Chasers also heralds, heralds the arrival of a new hunt pass, Myth and Legend, which offers Slayers the opportunity to explore the history and heroism of Ramsgate. To a company announcement, uh, there was a bunch of um, pictures shown off as well, and uh, looks like uh, Switch owners. If you want to play da Dauntless, you can you can grab that right now. I don't know what Dauntless is, so I'm no help to you. But it looked pretty cool from the trailer, uh, and hopefully the crossplay works. <laughs> All right, so the Streets of Rage Four series has seen the return of a beloved character that everyone was asking for, and that character is Adam Hunter. The 80s-themed beat-em-up action game is getting Adam Hunter, who originally starred in the first Streets of Rage but wasn't present in any of the, its sequels, and he's remained a firm favorite of fans of the franchise. And during the Indie World broadcast, he confirmed that Hunter would be a playable character alongside his daughter Cherry in the final game, which will launch in early 2020. So there you go. Cool news for people who are fans of Sh Streets of Rage. Um, no news on exactly what day Street to Rage 4 is going to come out, but it said early 2020, so I'm guessing some sometime in, like, February or March or something like that. But we shall see in the future. All right, Super Mash smashes together different genres for a new experience every freaking time. So, this looks like a pretty cool game. Super, Super Mash will let you... Uh, combine different genres and make completely new games with each time you play. It's going to launch around May 2020. So it's going to take two different classic genres like JRPG and Stealth, and it will magically mash them together uh, to make one. And from the trailer, you can see that genres such as RPG, Shooter, Platformer, Action Adventure, Metrovania, and I believe uh, one says Stealth, and there's another one behind it that I can't see right now. Uh, but you'll be able to you know, behold the the smashing mightiness of the two mashups. And then you'll be able to share mashups also using a code system to share with other people as well. So that's pretty cool. I can definitely see this becoming a, a hit. But, I mean, how how much replay value is this that is in this, you know? Are they going to be adding more? I, I, don't even, I don't even know. But yeah, apparently the game is based around you and your sister open up a development studio in your in the, in your house. And uh, you you just try to mash things together until something works, right? Uh, so we'll see what happens in the future with this. And like I said, it's going to be coming out around May 2020. All right, everyone's been waiting for it. Axiom Verge 2 has been revealed for the Nintendo Switch. Uh, the sneak peek was revealed during the Indie Showcase. Uh, so yeah, it was actually at the end of the Indie World Showcase. And it was a full reveal for Axiom Verge 2 which is a sequel to the to uh, Axiom Verge, the original Axiom Verge. Tom Happ, the game's creator, took to the stage to talk about the new game and show off the trailer. He says that he's been working quietly on the new release for about four years, but it's finally time for him to show us what, how the game is shaping up. Uh, the game is going to let players discover the origins of Axiom Verge universe when it arrives next year, and you can catch Axiom Verge's two trailer footage on the official Nintendo YouTube channel. If you haven't played the original yet, lots of people gave it high, high marks when it originally came out. 
Um, and I guess you should probably play that one first. <laughs> and I'm sure it's, you know, it's relatively cheap now that it's been out for a few years. But hey, good news for people who are fans of Axiom Verge. Axiom? Oom. The Talus Principle brings narrative first person puzzle solving to the Switch. Actually, it came out today, the day of the Indie Indie Showcase. So, uh, it launched on PC back in December of 2014. The Talos Principle is now launching on the Switch today, which is Tuesday, the 10th of December, 2019, almost five years to the day after its debut. It's a single-player game from the creation developer Crow Team, the creators of Serious Sam series, and launched to widespread acclaim five years ago, a first-person narrative puzzler, it features over 120 em- environmental head scratchers, and as you explore ancient ruins littered with sexy technology, uh, kind of reminds me of The Witness, except uh, I, I guess it's a little bit more intuitive, uh, maybe a little bit more, uh, you know, it's more to do in the real world and not just on boards, right? <laughs> Here are some of the game's features: overcome more than 120 immersive puzzles in a stunning world. Divert drones, manipulate laser beams, and even replicate time to prove your worth or to find a way out. Explore a story with humanity, technology, and civilization. Uncover clues, device theories, and make up your own mind. Choose your own path through the game's non-linear world, solving puzzles on your way. So it does sound a lot like the wit- the, 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 not the Witcher. Did I say the Witcher? The Watcher? Is that what it's called? The Watch? The Witness! The Witness! Uh, yeah, so there's no word yet on what makes this edition a deluxe edition, but um, it'll take up about 3.5 gigabytes of space on your Switch, and it's going to be about 30, uh, about 30 melons, guys. It's going to be about 30 melons. Melon. All right, uh, Boyfriend Dungeon is a dating simulator where your soulmate will turn into your weapon. <laughs> Uh, Kit Fox Games revealed that it's bringing a dating simulator dungeon crawler mashup onto the Nintendo Switch next year called Boyfriend Dungeon. It's set in a world where boyfriends can also transform into powerful weapons. You'll need to find the perfect date in order to conquer the game's monster-filled levels. If you succeed in capturing their hearts, then they will level up and become even more powerful in battle. Developed in coordination with dating dungeon fans, Boyfriend Dungeon seems to be the perfect counterpoint to Is It Wrong to pick up a pick up girls in a dungeon uh which is another game that's gonna be coming in 2020 as well interesting uh the the gameplay looks pretty simple it's 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 just a, like a top down or maybe more like a three down third th- i don't even know it's like a top down beat up kind of game uh where you go through different levels and dungeons and stuff like that and you find new weapons it's a nice spin on the thing um is it geared towards women sure can men play it Yes. Can heterosexual men play it? Of course. Can homosexual men play it? Yes. Can Pepsi Man play it? Well, no, because he's just a digital, digital man who doesn't really have feelings except the feeling, the urge, the urge to sell Pepsi. All right, Team 17 is revealing The Survivalist, a new sandbox game set in the same universe as The Escapist. That's right. Uh, during the Indie World Showcase, Team 17 revealed The Survivalist, which a which is a, is a sequel, kind of like a sequel, to The Escapist, if you all know what that is. It's a crafting game where you try to escape, I believe you escape prison in that one, or, or something like that. And The Survivalist is all about surviving on a deserted island. So yeah, it's going to be a rich world that never stands still, says Team 17, complete with its own day and night cycle, a broad range of animals such as boars, big cats, and sharks, deadly fanatics, highly skilled in combat. To help with survival, the game includes a mimic system that allows players to train the local monkey population to gather resources, build structures, and even fight off threats. While a crafting system offers plenty of weapons to unlock and develop, you can either try to survive it alone, or you can team up in a session based online co-op it's going to be available digitally on the switch next year so cool for fans of the escapist this one looks like it's going to be more of the same except with a little bit of a different spin on it and training monkeys is freaking awesome all right bake in switch mixes overcooked with smash brothers for some co-op brawl based 
baking. That's right. They're going to blend the two genres just like that last game we talked, not the other game we talked about, uh, in Bacon Switch. Coming to Switch in the summer of 2020. It's going to be mixed equal parts between Brawler and Chaotic Kitchen Simulator. Um, so in the trailer, the, the guy came out and he was eating stuff and he was like, mm, we love baking and, and eating. So he combines, you know, these two genres. So, uh, here's what Nintendo has to say about the game and what the details are. Work as a team in local co-op mode, up to four players to save their world. The bakers must combine the doughs. The bigger the dough, the higher your score and bake heaving amounts of dough in the oven before time runs out. Appease the hangry guardians. Journey through the levels to summon the guardians. Satitate their insufferable munchies and gain their aid to defeat the scourge. Little did the bakers know what the guardians demanded in return. Fight the scourge. Punch away yucky spores and stickies before innocent buns turn bad. If you're lucky, collect power-ups to freeze, electrify, magnet, and solar. Palm your way to victory! Become top baker in PvP mode. Test your friends by sabotaging each other's ovens to bake as many doughs to win gloating rights. Choose your baker! Bakers hold the most prestigious yet perilous position amongst their kin. Only the swiftest and sharpest of the of the lot get called to enter the inner sanctum of the first bakers. So there you go. It's going to be another coach co-op game. It's going to be coming to the Switch in summer of 2020. If you want to, you can check out the reveal trailer during the Indie Showcase or on the Nintendo official homepage. I'm not sure where the Smash Brothers aspect of this comes from, but I do see where the baking aspect comes from. And uh, I love raw dough. I eat it so much that I throw up. Don't don't be weird. Don't be weird now. It's a lie. I mean, it's a lie. It's not true. It's just it's just a joke. It's just a joke. <laughs> Alright, um, here's another big thing that was revealed during the Indie Showcase. Cubic Games is giving away 10 free Nintendo Switch games to everyone, including you. All you have to do is buy one uh, Cubic Games game. That's pretty freaking sweet. So, Cubic Games is now starting uh, from now until December 24th. You'll be able to get what Cubic Games is calling a chain reaction system. You'll need to own one Cubic Games title, and you will do as long as it's tied to your Nintendo account. Uh, once one Cubic Games title is owned by your account, you'll be able to grab the first free game, Robonauts, until the 15th of December. After that, they come out daily, guys. So you get Robonauts between the 10th and the 15th, Geki Yaba Runner from on the 16th, Puzzle Book on the 17th, one Strike on the 18th, Wrecking Ball Adventure. I didn't know Wrecking Ball Adventure was made by them. That's a great game if you haven't played it. Wrecking Ball Adventure, 19th of December. Color Row, which is the 20th of December. Race Die Run, another good one. The 21st of December. Wrecked on the 22nd. Mana Spark on the 23rd. And Mystery Game to be announced on the 24th of December, Christmas Eve. Uh, it's also worth noting that the giveaway is taking place all across Europe and the Americas. Uh, but if you live in Japan, oh, but if you live in, in Japan, uh, it doesn't look like you'll be getting this deal. So rip to you guys, but hey, not too bad. And if you do miss one game during the chain reaction, the games are going to be vastly discounted in quotation marks for around three weeks after it was free. And you'll have a chance to pick up any that you missed. And if you buy the game, you'll be able to continue your chain. Pretty cool. Pretty freaking cool. Cubic Games, you got a thumbs up in my book. They have some good games. Robonauts was grew, was pretty good. Space Pioneer is awesome. Wrecking Ball Adventure is really good. Uh, Race Die Run is a great like speedster type game. And I'm a pretty big fan of the... Um, I already said Robonauts, so never mind. <laughs> I already said Robonauts. But there, there you go. If you want to, you can join on that. Meow. Just like the Cats movie. I get tickets. Meow. Mm, cringe. Oh. Rada rada, bitch. Warhammer 40,000. Space Wolf is bringing turn-based tactical strategy to the Switch next month with all the DLC included. So if you didn't know, Warhammer 40,000 Space, Ro- w- Space Wolf is a game which fuses turn-based strategy and card game elements together, and it's set to launch on the Switch next year, and it's now been confirmed. The game is said to feature an epic story campaign, unique PvE game modes, wide character customization, and a tedious, a tremendous amount of weapons and equipment. The Switch version will also come with all the previously released DLC as standard, and also boasts a whole new local co-op experience 
there you go. Uh, this game was originally released on mobile, if I remember correctly, um, which, I mean, I think the mobile version was plagued with uh, microtransactions and stuff like that, and when it came out on the PC, I believe they, they toned those back, and probably on the Switch there'll be even less, but don't quote me on that. Uh, here's what the press release says. Warhammer 40,000 Space Wolf is a turn-based tactical strategy in which you have to take control of the Space Wolves and join the battle against the wicked servants of Chaos and the city, city sinister Necrons. The game features an epic story campaign with unique survival mode, a system for leveling and tuning the squad, different classes of armor and a huge number of weapons, and all previously released DLC. If you want to, it'll be available on the 23rd of January, 2020 for about... Seventeen ninety nine, which seems like seems like a little bit much to me for a game of this caliber. Okay, there's going to be a free grid autosport update, which is adding split screen and online multiplayer to the Switcheroonie. Uh, two important updates are con on the way for grid autosports for the Nintendo Switch. The first one is arriving the start of next week and is set to introduce two player split screen mode while and local wireless multiplayer for up to eight players. The second update, which is adding online multiplayer, will arrive sometime next year. So the 16th of December, two-player split screens coming with local wireless multiplayer with up to eight players. And in 2020, there you go, online multiplayer coming then. Uh, nothing too exciting there, I suppose. If you're a fan of Grid, no, well, there you go. You got you can play with your friends now. Can you play online yet? Not yet. Which I'm sure will be revealed the exact time you can expect that. I'm guessing it's going to be early next year because it's it's obviously something, it's something they've been, you know. Uh, you know, working on for a while. So there you go. Uh, are you excited about that? Let me know. Okay, so the MLB The Show is no longer going to be a PlayStation exclusive. <gasps> That's right. The MLB got greedy, guys, and they don't want the uh, the the only baseball game that it, that gets ten out of tens to be on the the the, the PlayStation solely. No, I just burped solely. Uh, so yeah, the MLB The Show is going to be coming to the Nintendo Switch and to the Xbox Uno. Uh, so Major League Baseball today, which is Tuesday the 10th, um, <laughs> Sony Interactive and San Diego Studios announced multi-year extensions to continue the development of the officially licensed video game. Alongside this, they revealed that the long-running franchise will also be coming to additional console platforms beyond the PlayStation as early as 2021. More information is going to be revealed at a later date. Nintendo of America also tr also tweeted if the news in a show of I get it a show of excitement. <laughs> So there you go. Uh, so yeah, the Switch and the Xbox One are predicted to be the, the two places it's coming to. It's possible it could come to the PC, but we don't see many sports games on the PC unless it's like Football Manager uh, 2020 or whatever it is. So there you go. Uh, if you're excited about this, if you're an MLB fan, a baseball fan in general, there you go. You're going to be getting... You won't be you won't be tied to... Uh, what is it called? Uh, Bigs or something like that? I don't even remember. All right, so that's all the indie news. Let's talk about not the state of play yet, guys. We're going to do all the Nintendo stuff, then we'll do state of play. As punishment for <laughs> to Sony. <laughs> so here's a good story, guys. Uh, Rare devs, the devs who are behind Banjo-Kazooie, Donkey Kong, and, of course, Sea of Thieves, even though they're not the same people, uh, they forgot to remove a realistic shotgun from Donkey Kong 64 be before showing it to Miyamoto. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, so during a recent interview with Games Radar, Donkey Kong 64 has turned 20 years old, and they were talking to the creative lead, George Andres, who recalled a horrifying moment when the when Rare was showing the game to Shigeru Miyamoto, Sotaru Iwata, and Harold Lincoln, who was Nintendo of America's chairman at its new studio, uh, and Donkey Kong pulled out realistic whoop... <laughs> And while they were showing off the game, Donkey Kong pulled out a realistic-looking shotgun. Uh, he says, We switched on the game. They saw the rap. And then I started running around as Donkey Kong. I swung on some vines, collected bananas, and they were beginning to really smile. And then I pressed a button to pull out the gun. It wasn't a textures gu textured gun that you might expect, but a realistic shotgun with bullets flying out of it and horrifying sound effects. Andrea said he completely forgot it was there. Miyamoto wasn't impressed and took out some paper and drew the coconut gun. And he's quoted as saying, You get so used to things being in development, even if it's a placeholder, and I completely forgot that it was in there. 
I'm shooting beavers. Turn to my side and see this look of horror on Miyamoto's face. Then he smiled, and taking some paper and a pencil, drew a coconut gun in front of us. It had leaves on it, and he handed it to me. I looked at it and said, oh yeah, that's cool. We'll put that in. And the coconut gun was put in after that. So yeah, <laughs> that was probably pretty funny to see Donkey Kong wielding a 12-gauge shotgun. Uh, and this might have been the basis for Conker's Bad Fur Day, which was released in 2001. Um, so yeah, not <laughs> kind of a funny story. Uh, and yeah, I, I think uh, I think that kind of goes down in history as one of my favorite uh, <laughs> rare <laughs> uh, little antidotes from Rare. <laughs> I love I love that. If you don't recall, Donkey Kong 64 has their publishing has its publishing and developing rights strewn across everywhere. So that's why you haven't really seen it again. And hopefully, Rare and um, Xbox and and Nintendo will come to terms and get like a remaster of this coming out. That would be awesome. Donkey Kong 64 was one of my favorite games back when I was a kid. Uh, I, I have very fond memories of it. Of course, if you go back, the camera system's a little bit wonky. The field of view is a little bit bad. But I think that if they update the game a little bit, I think we could really have a, a gem of a remaster here. Uh, there you go. Take that idea and run with it, guys. I'm waiting. Okay, so Reggie fils is going to return to the Game Awards as a presenter and not as Nintendo's head of America. So later this week, the 2019 Game Awards is going to be taking place at the Microsoft Theater in Los Angeles. Uh, biased much? Actually, there weren't, like, any Microsoft official games in this year's thing except for Gears 5. So yeah, although Reggie fils is now officially moved on from his role at Nintendo of America, he's going to be coming back to present some awards at the Game Awards stage, and they announced it on Twitter. So they said, Thursday night, Reggie returns to the Game Awards stage. Don't miss it. Live around the world, presenter Reggie fils Who knows what he's going to be presenting for? Maybe he'll do one or two. I don't know how they really do the Game Awards. Is it just like one person up there? I'm not sure. Uh, is he going to be part of something bigger? Probably not. He's been, he has a lot on his plate recently. Um, but yeah, the Game Awards 2019 is going to be hosted by Goff Kaylee, and it's and, uh, it's going to be on the 12th of December at 5.30 p.m. Pacific Time, which is around 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, what day is the 12th? That's really soon. That's Thursday. So, hey, maybe uh, we'll do a, like, a live stream reaction on Twitch? Huh? Maybe. Uh, set a reminder. Hey, Google. No, I don't have that set up. <laughs> Google, set me a reminder, please. Uh, also, what's expected to happen at this Game Awards is 10 new game reveals, so that's pretty cool, too. Um, so yeah, uh, there you go. Uh, Reggie fils is gonna be presenting some awards, looks pretty cool. Uh, but you know, the Game Awards doesn't really matter, guys, because Sunday, 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 I'm revealing my favorite games this year. Forget about the Game Awards. The Game Awards? More like the Trash Awards. I'm more important! And as I collect myself, Chucklefish has issued an apology for voice actor casting choices in Wargroove's DLC. Wargroove Double Trouble was the DLC that was supposed to release, I believe it was supposed to release later this year, but it's been pushed back, of course. So yeah, Chuck Chucklefish um, is the developer of Wargroove. They've been working on the upcoming DLC for it. Uh, for a while now, and they officially titled it Wargroove Double Trouble. It adds a new story and three new outlaw commanders. They include the mighty Wolfer, the troublemaking twins Errol and Orla, and the Malice Maleficent Vesper. That's a big word. Last month, the publisher and developer re revealed the voice actors in charge of bringing each of the new commanders to life in the game. Since then, it has issued an apology to the gaming community for casting white voice actors for non-white characters in the DLC. So, Aline Montgomery was supposed to be Errol. Adrian Vaughn was supposed to be Wolfer, who I think he still has his part. Jessica Strauss was supposed to be Vesper. And Vivian Taylor was supposed to be Orla. Now, here's the thing. Uh, only eight, uh, Wolfar is uh, white, Caucasian. While the other ones are darker skin complexion. Uh, and, uh, they had, uh, Caucasian females doing the voice actors for all of them. So, here's what, uh, here's what they have to say. Hi, everybody. First of all, we want to thank you for all the feedback in the last 24 hours in regards to the voice actor casting in Wargroove. We appreciate, we appreciate everybody who took the time to share their concerns and educate us. 
We want to be honest about what happened. During our casting process, we knew that we didn't want our own unconscious bias to impact who we hired to work on Wargroove. We took two steps to do this. The first was that we had an external casting management team who helped throughout development, and the second was that we handled the auditions blindly. That is to say, we made a point of not looking at profiles, back catalogs, headshots, etc., and made our decision only using audition audio files sent to us. We also understand that posting photos of our voice actors beside characters of color without acknowledgement of the systematic problem of representation in the industry was insensitive and poorly communicated. We sincerely apologize for the harm we have caused. We will be more sensitive in our future casting decisions and will continue to support the work of all those pushing for better representation of people of color in the industry. Signed, Wargroove Team. So, I do like that system of choosing voice actors and uh i don't know i don't i i'm not i mean of course i'm not a person of color so you know i'm 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 caucasian male and i i understand why they would do something like this because you don't want to like i I don't know you don't want to pick the wrong person for the role but you know just because of the way they look they they you know they get chosen you want to get the right person for the role and unfortunately it seems that all four people were white caucasian um, so I like the method of doing this and maybe possibly looking at a headshot will help a little bit, or at least knowing a little bit about the person in the future will know about it. But, you know, I, I don't know. I'm not really like pissed off about this. Of course, I, I can't really relate to it. Um, but let me know what you guys think, because I'm doing a call to action right here. What do you guys think of this? Let me know. All right, so Metacritic has revealed the best 50 or the top 50 best reviewed games of the decade, and Nintendo has taken the top slot of two different places. Let's go through these, guys, cuz uh, there's a lot on this list. And we're just going to go through them. It starts at 91 and it goes all the way up to 97 Metacritic review score. So let's see. There's Dragon Quest uh, 9 S Echoes of an Elusive Age Definitive Edition, Final Fantasy, was that XIV. So that's that's th- 14, Shadowbringers, Forza Horizon 3, Bayonetta 2, Overwatch, Little Big Planet 2, The Witcher 3, Wild Hunt, Blood and Wine, The IC, the, the Ico, and Shadow of the Colossus Collection, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, Xenoblade Chronicles, Journey, Super Smash Bros. for the Wii U, Divinity Original Sin 2 Definitive Edition, Fire Emblem Awakening, Undertale, The Witcher 3, Wild Hunt, Super Street Fighter 4, Celeste, Bloodborne, Uncharted 3, Drake's Deception, God of War 3, Forza Horizon 4, Inside, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, Uncharted 4, A Thief's End, Rock Band 3? Actually, that's not too bad. I liked Rock Band 3. I thought it was, I, I was... Okay, never, never mind, we're skipping that. Uh, the Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword on the Wii, okay. Metal Gear Solid 5, The Phantom Pain, Mass Effect 3, okay. Persona 5, Persona 4, Golden, StarCraft 2, Wings of Liberty, Super Mario World, 3D World, uh, Divinity Original Sin 2, Pac-Man Champions, Championship Edition DX, Bioshock Infinite, The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time 3D, Batman Arkham City, God of War 2018, Portal 2, Red Dead Redemption, The Last of Us Remastered, The Last of Us Original, The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim, Mass Effect 2, Super Mario Odyssey, Grand Theft Auto V, Red Dead Redemption 2, and then finally The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild and Super Mario Galaxy 2. Both at 97 at the top. So not too bad. Not too bad at all. Uh, this is a pretty good list besides from like one or two things that I had to stop and stumble over. It's surprising to see Rock Band 3 on this list because uh, I, I I was under the impression that a lot of people didn't like that one. But I personally, I thought it was okay. I thought the song selection could have been a little bit stronger uh, in terms of like having less harmonics bands and more original like actual bands. Um, it's better than four, that's for sure. And I think it's better than one. Maybe not. Maybe it's on the same page as two. And I like the addition of the keyboard. It was funny. <laughs> it was more for the meme. And Smash Mouth was on the original game, so that puts him up there too. What do you guys think? What's your what, what's your favorite game on this list? Let me know. Re- <laughs> Listen back to it a few times. Let me know. All right. The elusive Smash Brothers GameCube controller is getting a restock coming early 2020. If you're a hardcore Smash Brothers player, you probably swear by the GameCube controller. Many fans of the series consider it to be the best interface for the game, and this has led to an incredibly high levels of demand for the official option released by Nintendo itself some time ago. 
The controller went out of stock really fast, and it was selling for over $100 on eBay, Amazon, and the like. And now the good news is, good news everyone, that the Nintendo store on Amazon is showing that the pad will become available early next year. It'll restock early next year. You can pre-order it one you can pre-order it actually now for $24 um or 24 pound, which is about $26 or so. And uh, there you go. If you want to, you can pre-order those now. Just go on to Amazon. You can go on to the Nintendo official store, and there it's ready to go, right for you. Uh, are you a GameCube controller purist? I know Fellow uses one, and I know I that my best time playing Super Smash Brothers was during Melee, and that was the GameCube controller era. And then I haven't really played Smash Brothers until Ultimate, so I guess I'm a GameCube controller purist too. All right, high five up top. Okay, so big news, the Nintendo Switch is officially launching in China next week. The Chinese market is opening at last. That's right. Nintendo regional partner Tencent in the Chinese market has finally revealed that the Switch will be launching on the 10th of December. Oh, that's today. Okay, this article is a little bit older than I thought. So yeah, it came out today, uh, Tuesday. (laughs) I already said that. It's going to be coming out for a price of 2,099. Is it yen? RB, oh, what's RMB? RMB is their currency, I guess, which is about 300 US dollars. Additionally, games are going to be priced at about 299 RMB, which is about 42 dollars US dollars, which is typical for the region. The particular model will will come bundled with new Super Smash, <laughs> I'm sorry, new Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe, and it will have a one year warranty. Only new Super Mario Bros. U has been approved for release, and additional titles are coming soon, which they already have been revealed. So, uh. The titles are um, Mario Rabbids Kingdom Battle, Just Dance, Raymond Legends, alongside Rabbids Adventure Party from Ubisoft Chengdu, which is currently going to be is which is currently a China exclusive. Rabbids Adventure Party is said to be inspired by Journey to the West, which is a classic piece of Chinese literature. Previous reports also stated how the game was part of Ubisoft's mission to create unique experiences for the Chinese market, meaning it's probably not going to be coming to the U.S. or Europe. But cool news for China. Uh, The pictures that they show here show Mario Tennis, uh, Mario Party, Kirby All-Stars, Yoshi's Crafted World, Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, and Breath of the Wild, along with Mario Kart 8 and Odyssey, which I believe those two, or three, because it has Super Mario Bros. U on here, I think those three are coming out the same day uh, as the release as well. And, of course, there's a bunch of more planned as well. So, cool news for the Chinese market. Congratulations. You got the Switch. All right, Dead Cells. It's getting a new DLC pack, which is going to add chill-inducing monsters and all new weapons. The new DLC is called The Bad Seed. So the Rise of Giant DLC was released earlier this year, and it's coming, of course, to Dead Cells, which is a fan-favorite roguelite Metrovania with uh, kind of like -like Souls-like permadeath. And it's going to be getting some new DLC, which is going to be named The Bad Seed. It's only going to be for about $5, and there's plenty of details in a press release by the company. Motion Twin and Evil Empire today revealed the wealth of content awaiting Dead Cells fans in its upcoming The Bad Seed DLC, kicking off 2020 with two generous new biomes, several new chill-inducing monsters and all new weapons, plus an exceedingly creepy boss battle. In case you're not dying enough, more more entirely unique ways to meet your maker are on the way, with a release planned on all platforms in Q1 of 2020 for for a $5 price tag. The Bad Seed DLC introduces new path choices in early game, ensuring that all players, no matter their level, will be able to enjoy it. Players will discover two new biomes inhabited by their own diverse, distinctive best bestinary, bestinary, the Arboretum, a lush paradise to deceivingly (laughs) adore, a lush paradise to deceivingly adorable creatures, and the swamp, where an overgrown or Boreal settlement inhabited by ambushing blowgunners and spiel wielders is your only escape from the gargantuan purple ticks that rain constantly from the ground. Holy shit, got enough big words in this one? Come on, guys, you know I can't read. Triumphantly over the numerous perils built by the Dead Cells developers with as such love as sadism will be awarded with a, a con... con- conceptually unique armory 
<laughs> including the first double slot weapon, as well as a very dedicated and loyal mushroom companion. Of course, vengeance visited upon the monsters and challenging new biomes that once slowed you down is its own reward, but a few new weapons never hurt anybody. While offered as additional paid content, the Bad Seed DLC is not intended to mark the end of the free post-launch content updates the devs have proven to be committed to over the years. Free content balancing and systematic updates are planned at the same steady rhythm and of the same quality as seen as 2019. Revenue from paid content like the Bad Seed will allow the team to continue to expand Dead Cells' base game uh, with and for the fans for a long time to come. There you go. That's the whole thing. That was a lot of big words. I apologize to everyone out there that was extremely difficult for me to even listen back to in my own headset. All right, we're moving on to the state of play, guys. Woo! I said woo! Here we go. <clears throat> All right, so Resident Evil 3 is returning to Raccoon City in, on the 3rd of April, and it's going to be bundled with Project Resistance, as I predicted. I did not predict that it'll be that it'll be shown off at the state of play. Yes, it is real, and you're going to be getting it quicker than you thought. Resident Evil 3 Remake is coming in on the 3rd of April in 2020. It's a PlayStation 1 original, and you'll once you'll once. <laughs> And you'll once again assume the role of Jill Valentine as you attempt to make a desperate escape from Raccoon City. And you'll once again be chased by Nemesis along the way. So yeah, it's pretty cool that the remake is going to be coming with Resident Evil Resistance as well, which is a new multiplayer spinoff for five players. And uh, there's going to be a collector's edition as well. Uh, let's look at the collector's edition. The collector's edition is going to be about $180, and the pre-order you're going to get a classic costume pack. Uh, inside the Collector's Edition, you're getting the Raccoon City Double-Sided Map, Resident Evil 3 Standard Edition, Digital Double Album sa Soundtrack, an 11-inch Jill Valentine figure, uh, Star's Item Box Packaging, and a Collector's Art Book. Every pre-order for the game, no matter where it is, uh, whether it's a Standard or Collector's Variant, will come with a classic co costume pack containing Jill's iconic boob tube outfit and Carlos Oliveira's classic hairstyle. Uh, there you go. Are you going to cough up the dough to get this? $180 is a lot, but if you're a fan of Resident Evil, that's a pretty good one for you. If you're a fan of Jill Valentine, uh, this is a pretty nice statue for you as well. Uh, so yeah, there you go. Um, I believe, actually, it's not it's not known if the UK and Europe are going to be getting the same collector's edition yet. Uh, but there you go. You can, you, can, you can get it on the North American GameStop website right now. Pre-order it right now. If uh, if Resident Evil 3 is, is is half as good as Resident Evil 2 Remake, well, there you go. It's going to be one badass game. I, I really, really enjoyed Resident Evil 2 Remake, and seeing that Resident Evil 3 Remake is right around the corner is pretty satisfying. Also, it's rumored that Resident Evil 2 and 3 Remakes were originally going to be planned as one single package. Of course, that didn't happen, which I'm okay with. I'm okay with. I'm not mad. I ain't mad. Alright, so it's been revealed that new Ghost of Tsushima trailers will be revealed uh, at the Game Wars 2018, and they're going to be the longest uh, yet. They're going to be the longest yet. Ghost of Tsushima got a very brief teaser right at the end of the State of Play this today, and it's, uh, it's said that there's going to be more information coming soon, which everyone's guessing is the 2019 Game Awards. Um, so yeah, it's, it's probably not going to be a quick and... Uh, I don't know, fast trailer is probably going to show some combat elements and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, Goff Kaylee, who is the, of course, the guy who's uh, coordinating the Game Awards, said, Ghost of Tsushima is our longest trailer in the show on t Thursday. So, I, okay, it's been confirmed. I apologize, I, I read that wrong. So yeah, hopefully uh, Sucker Punch's project is going to be revealed in full, and hopefully we'll get a release date as well, which is probably going to be 2020, I'm guessing late 2020, or early 20, or not early, but mid-2020. Um, obviously it's going to be released before the PlayStation 4 comes out, or 5, jeez. Uh, so there you go. So yeah, let's we'll, we'll have to wait and see on more information for that. Also during the state of play, Dreams PS4 release date has finally been confirmed for... February 14th, 2020. Aw, Valentine's Day. Which is the same day as, like, everything else. Coincidence? I, I think it is just a coincidence, actually. So, yeah, if you didn't know, uh, Dreams has been in beta mode for a while now, and lots of people have been creating lots of different things, from Crash Bandicoot levels to actual first-person shooters. 
and now Dreams is going to release on PlayStation 4 the 14th of February in 2020. The early access phase is, phase is now over, and you can no longer purchase the that version of the game. And it's also good to know that the full version is just a handful of weeks away. And is this going to be the final release for Dreams? Probably. Uh, but they'll probably improve it as the game goes on. So there you go. Are you excited for Dreams? I know it's been a, um, getting teased for a while now. And now we're finally getting a full release. All right. Predator Hunting Grounds, which was a reveal that the last state of play got more uh, information, a bigger trailer, stuff like that. And it's also... Ooh, excuse me. It's also been revealed that it's not going to be a PlayStation exclusive. It's also coming to the PC as well. Uh, so if you pre-order, let me just go over this right now because it's frozen on the screen. You're going to get the exclusive 87 Predator skin and you're going to get early access to the old painless minigun. So in the trailer, they showed off the different classes that you'll be able to play as. Um, I believe, I believe in a thing called love. One of them was, uh, let me just watch the trailer. <laughs> Let me just watch the trailer again. There's going to be the Hunter, which is going to be versatile hunting style and has balanced choice in weapons. There's also going to be the Berserker, who has savage power and extra health. There's also going to be the Scout, who has increased speed and unlimited stamina. That's pretty good. And then, uh, was that the last one? Yeah, I think that was the last one. So Scout, Berserker, and... um, Hunter. There you go. And there's also going to be weapons. You can choose your weapons. There's a whole variety of weapons that was shown off for both sides of the game, including the uh, the classic shoulder-mounted gun. Uh, there's going to be a spear, and of course the classic claws as well. And it looks like the regular people have like uh, one looks like a Scar L, and another one looks more like a AK-47, uh, like a futuristic version. And you can also see an M16 as well. And the apparently you can also get a bow and arrow for the Predator, uh, which is pretty cool too. And you can also collect trophies. That's right. You can pull spines and skulls out of people and save them for later. That's right. So it was a pretty good reveal trailer, and uh, or I should say trailer in general. And it's going to be released on April 24th, 2020. So there you go. Are you excited for this? Pre-order now if you want to get those new costumes. And uh, there you go. Not too shabby. Also revealed, it's official, Untitled Goose Game is coming onto the PS4 next week. Um, so yeah, uh, this the Untitled Goose Game has been pretty much given like lots of high marks and stuff like that. I love it myself. It's a great game, really fun. And it's coming to the uh, PlayStation 4 sooner than people expected. Of course, as I said in the last episode, the, the PlayStation 4 tr- uh, trophies were revealed but wasn't sure if the game was going to be coming out this year. And look at that. It's coming out the 17th of December, 2019, for the PlayStation. Um, I don't know how much it's going to be. It doesn't say in this article right now, but I'm guessing it's going to be about $10, just like the other places. Or was it $20? Um, I think it was $20 on other places. Uh, Still a great game. Great game. Uh, And if you want to, you can pick it up next week. Okay, uh, Subliminal is a perspective-bending puzzler that's coming to PS4 in 2020. Um, Subliminal has been around on the PC for a little while, and, uh, it looks like the, or actually it's been revealed that the, the game, the puzzle game is coming to the PlayStation, uh, no reveal date yet though. 2020 is the tentative date. Um, so yeah, it's coming to PS4 at some point next year. Uh, it looks pretty cool. There's like aspects of the game where you like hold things up and it gets bigger as you move it farther away from you or smaller or something like that. It looks really cool. And if you want to, you can check out the trailer on, on the official PlayStation, um, YouTube channel. Uh, it looks pretty cool. I, I don't know what else to say about it. It's, it's very interesting looking game It really like it works with perspectives and stuff like that. Uh, so if you like puzzle games, this might be the next big thing. For you. Alright, also, Spellbreak is bringing Cell Shaded Battle Royale to the PS4 next spring. I wasn't really interested in this, so I kind of, you know, t- tuned it out while I was watching. Uh, it's kind of like Fortnite, but uh, but set in like a Legend of Zelda, Breath of the Wild, Jet Set Radio kind of world. Um, so, Spellbreak is a new Battle Royale in the game entering in closed beta in spring 2020. It's a fantasy-inspired game. So it's going to be more like Realm Royale than Player Unknown Battleground. And um, the art style looks pretty nice in it, actually. 
Here's what they said in a press release. We took our inspiration from old school shooters like skill shots and crazy mobility and we added in some modern twists to make combat system that truly embodies fantasy action spellcasting. Uh, which is developer Proletch... Add that to our spin on Battle Royale with elements of roguelike games and RPGs along with gorgeous art style and here's something we feel totally unique. I don't know how to say that. Shut up! Uh, the, the man was Seth Sivak, though, from Proletariat. <laughs> don't know. <laughs> All right, so Babylon's Fall is coming... Um... Oh, sorry. All right, so Babylon's Fall got a pretty lengthy gameplay trailer. It was the first reveal... Uh, it was actually first revealed at E3 2018, and now we have, like, a full gameplay reveal now, in 2019. More information is going to come next summer, so people are expecting it to either come late 2020 or possibly in the PS5 era in 2020, 2021. 2020, 2021! <laughs> 2021! Um, the gameplay looks pretty exciting. It looks kind of like a Souls-like experience. Uh, the bosses look pretty badass. The moose and everything looks pretty cool. If you want to, you can check out the trailer for that also on Sony's official PlayStation YouTube channel. Um, so yeah, the, the it's it looks pretty cool, and uh, I'm I'm interested to see where it's gonna go. Um, so yeah, you're gonna be we're gonna be waiting a little while for even more information, which is coming in summer of 2020, which is probably E3, and then we'll see if there's gonna be a reveal date uh, released or something like that. Who knows? All right, it's so all the state of play stuff that I was interested in. And here, Sony's sending out um, some dynamic Christmas themes to PS4 players in Europe and North America through your email. So make sure you check your email because you could possibly get a new theme for free. That's right. Uh, you'll be getting codes for both um, North America and Europe and unfortunately not Japan. So there you go. If you want to get into the Christmas spirit, this new theme is called Happy Holidays Theme 2019. You could possibly get a code uh, it's a neat little freebie featuring animated visuals and sparkly backing background music. And there you go. It's a, it's pretty cozy. So um, I don't think you can actually uh, buy it, I don't think. Uh, it's, it's just a code that you have to kind of get in the background. So if you get a code, uh, sell it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you can get this, this, this for free. And speaking of themes... There's going to be a, there is actually a free Sekiro Shadows Die Twice dynamic theme, which is coming onto the PS4, and it's available now. It's a holiday theme available now. So, you can actually pick it up now as Sekiro, Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. I believe they're rewarding us for all the high praises that it, that it was getting, and nods for Game of the Year. Um, so it's pretty straightforward. It has a um, character art paired with moody music in the background. It's a dynamic theme, and it's not bad for a freebie. Um, so yeah, uh, make sure you download it now. Um, it's from Activision, of course, and you should be able to find it in the themes category. All right, so a new Bioshock game has been announced, and it's probably going to be coming in 2020 to 2021 with the PS5. Publisher 2K Games announced the return of Ken Levine's dystopian FPS franchise, and the creator won't be at the helm this time, though. It also revealed that the next Bioshock title, 2K, has officially announced that a new internal studio named Cloud Chamber is going to be behind it. This is the team which will head up development in the upcoming shooter. However, don't expect the game to be anytime soon. 2K's press release revealed that the new Bioshock will be in development for the next several years. Woo! And it means that the, it's probably going to be a PlayStation 5 game in the future. Details on the game itself are, of course, non-existent, and 2K is unwilling to say whether the game will be a direct sequel to any of the previous entries or something else entirely. And we don't know if Kelly Gilmore, who has been working at developer Firaxis, will be leading the way on the new Bioshock game. Several key members of the staff who worked on previous games are returning, so there's a mix of old and new blood in Cloud Chamber. So yeah, it's a pretty nice announcement for them. Uh, kind of gets you questioning or wondering what's going to be next. Are they going to return the Rapture? Are they going to return to the the city in the sky in the in the clouds? Um, but we we will have to wait and see. I was I was joking on Discord. Uh, I hope they go underground. That's some place they haven't been before. Underground to like lava caverns or something like that. Be pretty cool because we've been underwater. We've been in the sky. Where's next to go? Underground. That's right. Unless you want to be. On the ground. That's just real life at this point. 
All right, so Snoop Diggity Dog, who was apparently... I mean, I guess he's changed his name back to Snoop Dogg. He was Snoop Lion for a while, which confused everyone, so I guess he just changed his name back. But Snoop Diggity Dog is in NHL 20 on the PS4 with the latest free update with items, commentary, and more to grace him. So Snoop Dogg has actually appeared in a few video games. Uh, he was in a trailer for, I think it was Spyro, and then he also was a voice actor in... Call of Duty Ghosts back in the day. He, he was like an announcer in that in as well. And uh, yeah, Snoop Dogg is, is coming out. Is The video that, that Sony published on their channel included a like him breaking down the series and the basics of the games, which is pretty funny. And now he's in the game himself. You'll be able to play as Snoop himself, face off against his team in hut battle, squad battles, or get Snoop-related items in the world of shell mode. The add-on is a welcomed and free inclusion for NHL 20. Uh, Snoop, jo- Snoop Dogg has joined the game to give commentary for a period here and there as well. And he's actually going to implement um, some colorful commentary, lively, engaging thoughts and slots as well. Uh, kind of funny. Uh, Snoop Dogg has kind of been everywhere recently, and uh, he's just he's a very popular guy. So this is kind of cool, especially because it's free. In, in Ghosts, you had to buy it. So it's, it's cool that it's free, and uh, if you have NHL 20... You'll you'll know <laughs> you you'll probably be the more excited than me. All right. All right. So the Call of Duty Modern Warfare Battle Pass progression is suspiciously slow. You need at least two hundred hours to get the top rank in battle in the battle pass. I've experienced it myself too. It's a very slow progression. Um, getting the newer weapons has been uh, quite the grind, and it seems like you don't get. Uh, points towards the battle pass for getting XP or winning games is more so how long you are playing, which is really mind-boggling to me as well. Uh, so Call of Duty content creators are reckoning that Spec Ops co-op mode is going to give you the best way to re- the, le- the rank up because the matches go on forever. And uh, you would think that stuff from like kills and challenges would affect it, but no. And double XP tokens don't apply to the battle pass rank ups as well. And it seems like Call of Duty has had the same problem as Apex Legends with its first battle pass. And at least Apex Legends was was fixed as the challenges that were put out mattered more in the long run. But hopefully Infinity Ward uh, addresses this before Season 2 or maybe sometime during Season 1 to help things go faster. And it looks like you're going to have to invest a lot of time to get the unlocks. But at least the weapons are pretty early on, I think. number f- The 15th slot is for sure the new L- LMG and I think it's like the 25th fifth slot or something like that is the new assault rifle which i'm pretty close to i think i'm only one tier away now yes i've been playing modern warfare guys oh oh gosh gasp emoji uh it i've i've been grinding it out i've been playing hardcore mode which i did not know was in the game so thank you to the depraved slasher for uh enlightening me and i've been enjoying it a little bit more uh still a little bit frustrated with the map designs um but when i go on maps that i enjoy i play really well but maps that i don't do you know, I don't like, I do pretty poorly. Uh, but yeah, you can uh, get the Battle Pass now. It's on sale right now if you want to, you know, rank up faster. Uh, but yeah, if you don't do that, you're going to be really slowly getting up. Uh, and I guess it's it's alive for 60 days, which is about, what, two months? So, yeah, get on that grind, boys. All right, CD Projekt Red is pulling the plug on Gwent, the Witcher card game on the PlayStation 4. CD Projekt Red announced recently that it's no longer supporting the console versions of Gwent the Witcher card game on both PlayStation, uh, I believe, is it on the Switch 2 and the Xbox, from the 9th of December onward, so they already are letting it go. Let it go! Uh, The developer said that the launch of Android and iOS has given the company more problems than what they thought, so they want to treat every platform fairly going forward. They came out and said, considering that PC and mobile are the most popular platforms among Gwent players, we have made a tough decision to discontinue support of console versions of the game. In other words, it sounds like Gwent isn't very popular on the PlayStation 4 and Xbox, and CD Projekt Red decided to cut the console versions loose to focus on what players are playing right now. Uh, There will also be a system in place that will allow console players to transfer their Gwent accounts over the PC and mobile. All Gwent players on console will be offered an option to copy their account progress and purchases from their current platform to a GOG account, which is used by both PC and mobile versions of the game. You can find more information on how it works 
uh, on the CG Project Red website. Starting today, which is um, which was December 4th, all in-game purchases are being disabled on the PlayStation 4 and Xbox, and on the 9th, you'll no longer be able to play against others online. Did you like Gwent? Is this sad to you guys? I never played Gwent. I wanted to play it, uh, but unfortunately, I guess my time is up. <laughs> So yeah, some interesting news in that in that aspect. I know they've been wait. I mean, wasn't it just released, or was it going to be released? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But anyways, it's gone now. So who cares? Okay, so the new Outlast game called Outlast Trials is going to add more unfortunate subjects to the terror because it's going to be a co-op creepy game. As previously teased, there's a new Outlast title in development, and it's going to feature co-op elements. It's not a direct sequel. Developer Red Barrel promises that this is a, this installment is set in the same thrilling universe, though. The press release explains the Outlast Trials will allow players to face the horrors of the trials by themselves or cooperate with up to three other test subjects. After all, it's better to, to, to shit your pants with some friends. <laughs> the title is going to take place during the Cold War, and it just entered full production. They said, our team is hard at work creating a new experience that will bring fear and anxiety to millions of players, whether they go through the experience alone or with friends, said studio co-founder David Chatounouf. Chatounouf? Uh, More information is going to be shared soon and probably at the Game Awards later this month. In the meantime, you can check out the artwork and the pictures uh, on on the press release. So it says... It has three people uh, kind of being scared and having goggles on their face, and then one guy's reaching up to a hand, and it says the Outlast Trials, where freedom ends. So that's cool. Uh, in the same universe as the other games, and during the Cold War, that's kind of that's going to be kind of freaky, I suppose. Hopefully it'll be better than Outlast 2, which I don't really like. Hopefully it's going to be more the speed of Outlast Uno. All right, coming uh, coming soon is Pile Up, which is a multiplayer PS4 game about cardboard box boxes, and it's coming to the PS4 in 2020. Um, so yeah, uh, Pile Up has just been announced as a multiplayer title where you and up to four people will control a colorful cardboard box. The game gets its name from the mechanic whereby you can stack on top of each other to solve environmental problems. It's a little bit like Tearaway with its cute paper style. And there's lots of opportunities for multiplayer chaos, which is always fun. In addition to the main game, Pile Up is going to feature mini-games such as football and other modes as seen in the trailer, which is on Handy Games' official YouTube channel. Uh, So yeah, hopefully this game is going to uh, offer up some clever ways to think outside the box. (laughs) And uh, it's going to be coming to the PlayStation in 2020. It looks pretty cool, uh, or fun, I should say. Not cool, it looks pretty fun. Uh, and it looks like there's going to be a co-op mode with just two people and up to four people, of course, as I said. But it doesn't look like you'll be able to play the game solo as of right now. I like the art style. I like the idea of the game. Hopefully it's implemented well. Like I said, it's going to be coming sometime in 2020. So stay tuned. Developer Seed by Seed. Publisher Handy Games. Games? Yeah. All right, so Minecraft players are able to join the PS4 players and PC players um, with crossplay. With the Xbox. Uh, so starting today, Minecraft players on the PlayStation 4 edition will begin updating. And the the, un, the unified Bedrock version of Minecraft is going to be available to everyone. That means that the cross-platform play will be activated across Xbox One, Windows 10, Nintendo Switch, iOS and Android mobile devices, Gear VR, and now PS4. In addition, PlayStation 4 players will now have their purchased content and progress carry across platforms and have access to the ever-growing in-game store, a source for world skins, mini-games, and mashup packs, meaning PS4 players will have not just a better Minecraft experience than ever before, but more Minecraft than ever. The new update will install automatically and free of charge on the PlayStation 4 uh, the next time they start Minecraft. The free update will also never expire, and all game purchases today for PS4 will always be for this new version. Uh, and they also confirm that you will be using the Xbox, like, Microsoft uh, UI for PlayStation purchases from now on. So linking your Microsoft account is going to be essential. Are you excited for this? Are you going to be able to play with all your friends? There you go. You can do it now on Minecraft. The woman in this picture that I'm showing on, in, like, the center of the picture who's playing PlayStation looks uh, like she's really having trouble enjoying Minecraft. So maybe this game's just not for her. All right, and finally, finally, guys, the the, the last, the last melon. melon. 
is new games with gold for December 2019 on the Xbox have now been revealed. That's right. Four new free games are coming around soon. So you're going to be getting Insane Robots for free, which will be available from December 1st through the 31st on Xbox One. Jurassic World Evolution is going to be available from the 16th to January 15th on the Xbox One. Toy Story 3 is going to be available from the 1st to the 15th on both Xbox One and Xbox 360. And then Castlevania Lords of Shadow Mirror of Fate HD is going to be available from the 16th of December to the 31st on both Xbox One and Xbox 360. Uh, Jurassic World Evolution is a great little game. It's, it's like, a you know, it's just like any of those, like, Roller Coaster Tycoon type games. Where, but it's with dinosaurs, so that's pretty cool. Insane Robots, not too sure what it is. It's a competition and unique card battler. Insane Robots is a collection of 46 plus deliciously diverse robots. Compete in one-on-one duels, lead a robot rebellion in survival arenas, or embark on an epic 15 plus hour campaign to overthrow a malevolent robot despot. Toy Story 3, the video game, is actually a really fun game. It's like got an open world on it. It's a really fun adventure. Great for kids. Uh, definitely recommend it, especially since it's free. And Castlevania Lords of Shadow Mirror Fate HD. Uh, this is the story of Be- the Belmont family in Castlevania. Uh, battle destiny across generations as Trevor Belmont, Knight of the Brotherhood of Light. Driven by vengeance for his slain mother, face off against his father, Gabriel, the all-powerful Dracula. War is declared in the cataclysmic battle between father and son in this epic follow-up to Castlevania, Lords of Shadows. So there you go. There's the four games that are free for this month for December on the Xbox. Pretty freaking cool. It's a $94.96 value and up to 3,585 gamer scores up to grabs as well. If you want to, you can download those if you have the Xbox Gold Game Pass now. Woo! Okay, another another good episode, guys. I've, I'm impressed with myself. Thanks so much for stopping by. It's been a pleasure. Remember, Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. That's right, we're doing the top 10 video games of 2019. We're going over the Game Awards, and I'm reading your Game of the Year as well. So make sure you go on Twitter and let me know. Any other questions, comments, or concerns, you can you can at me at Yemi the Ferret on Twitter. Or you can join my Discord. Links are usually in the descriptions of all my videos. And I'll put it in the... Dis- pro- probably forget, but I'll probably put it in the description of the SoundCloud and all those as well. So once again, thank you so much for coming to this episode of YummyCast. I appreciate you nonetheless, no matter whether you're on Spotify, SoundCloud, YouTube, or Apple Podcasts. Or if you're here for the premiere or not. doesn't matter to me as long as you listen to it. I appreciate you. Okay, enough rambling for me. Thank you so much. I will see you guys hopefully on Sunday. And have a great rest of your week. I'm Yummy Fert, and I and this has been YummyCast, the video game podcast. <laughs>